Well, here we are, just a few more days left for our novena. Hard to believe already, it's the eighth day, our seventh talk, and um, our feast is just around the corner. And I want to do as I have been doing, and I hope this is helpful for you, just to sort of do a recap on how far we've come in our travels together, what we've accomplished, and what we still want to do. And as you remember, we talked about our novena taking on this pilgrimage, this idea of a trip, which a pilgrimage is. But a pilgrimage is a, more of a spiritual trip, a, a trip, a moral trip, a trip to um, betterment, to an interior conversion to God. And we decided that in any trip, there are things that do not travel well with us. And the four we covered specifically, and there's much, many others we didn't talk about, we just mentioned them. The four things which don't travel well as pilgrims of hope are anger, resentment, the inability to forgive, and gossip. These and other negative behaviors rob us of our hope. We also decided, realized, and now understand the sooner we let go of these, and any of we might call the um, deadly or cardinal sins, that God's mercy flows into our lives, which renews our hope. And of course, that's the beauty of the sacrament of reconciliation. And many of you took advantage of it uh, when we had it uh, last week, when we had it after Mass on Saturday, when we had it uh, you know, during this novena because that's one way where we begin that process of God's grace flowing into our life and converting our hearts to the Lord. Then we decided there are things which we do want to travel with as pilgrims of hope, our theme, pilgrims of hope. These are essential, and they fill our souls and help us to grow spiritually. The first we identified is the Eucharist the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. How do we travel anywhere in this world or to our earthly destination without the body of Christ in us? The last night, last night, we added this about the Eucharist. We talked about two things which happen when we receive the body of Christ. When you are handed the Eucharist and you hear the words, the body of Christ, you say, Amen. Amen. And we understand amen to mean so be it. It is. Literally, we're saying it is truth. And we understood that the reception of the body of Christ demands both a response and a responsibility. The response is we do say amen, and the responsibility is that we agree as sons and daughters of God, as pilgrims of hope, to go and spread the good news of the gospel. Then we also talked about charity and joy, essential virtues that we bring in our pilgrimage because they bind and unite us under the same mission, which is to share what God freely gives us with others. And our joy we talked about, I think we all can say, who wants to take a trip anywhere with someone who has no joy? And our joy finds its grounding in that we have been, I said four words which are very important for us. We have been called, we have been elected, we have been selected and sanctified by our baptism to be children of God and pilgrims not only of hope, but of charity and joy. We then talked about last night what Pope St. John Paul II called the law of the gift. In its simplest expression, the law of the gift tells us the more we give away what God has given us, the more our hearts grow in gratitude and joy. This is truly a way of life for any pilgrim of hope. And then we also developed a little template to use as we give away the good news. The template was, if you remember, how we share our story with other people. Six words. First, I was, then God did, and I am. So, 
I was in a situation, God responded, and now here I am in a different situation. And I shared with you last night my own personal story. I have lots of those that I could share. And I shared with you how um, when there was a really a, a, a dark and a lonely and a desolate time in my life, I was lost. And God did something through my wife, Joanne, through the rosary. And I am now here, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Um, now tonight, and that's how we share. And by the way, I should have mentioned this way early on. As soon as I get caught up a little bit, all of these things I'm talking to you about, all of the things from the catechism, all the scriptural passages, we're going to put them on a handout and we can email them out or have copies made at the end of the talk, okay? So you don't have to remember this. I want you to remember the overall theme, but all of these things I'm talking about, all the saints we're discussing, you'll have something to take home with you. But tonight I want to talk about another essential we must take with us when we travel as pilgrims of hope. We have to have vision. Vision. Now you, may, you might say, well, what do you mean? I see fine. The vision I mean is not sight. The vision I'm talking about is a deliberate and intentional commitment to see the world through the eyes of God. And I might say, well, that's something we want to travel with, it's often challenging to do that. There's a syndrome I read about a while ago. This syndrome is something called Anton Babinski syndrome. Now, you probably have never heard about that. I did until I ran across this article. Anton Babinski syndrome. There have been 20 cases of this syndrome reported since it was first mentioned back in the 16th century. It occurs in people who have become blind because of a stroke or head trauma. The strange thing is about Anton Babinski syndrome is this. Those who suffer from it are truly blind. They cannot see at all. But they adamantly affirm that they can, in fact, see. They behave and talk as if they have sight, and they don't tell anyone they can't see, because it becomes evident they are sightless when they run into furniture or otherwise have difficulty getting around. When they're asked if they have trouble seeing, they deny it. They will often affirm they are sighted by describing people and objects around them which are either not there at all or are described incorrectly. Those with this syndrome genuinely believe or want to believe that they can see when in fact they cannot. It seems they cannot even admit to themselves that they are blind. Now this is a rare syndrome and an instance of being literally blind and either not knowing it or refusing to acknowledge it. Spiritual blindness, the lack of vision, is much more common. We all suffer from it, from one degree or another, now and again, and some of us for a very long time. Being pilgrims of hope means, among other things, recognizing this and allowing God's grace to overcome it. Like the song says, I was once lost, but now was bound, was blind, but now I see. As pilgrims of hope, we have to travel with the same world vision or worldview as our Lord Jesus Christ did. To see the world through his eyes, to respond as he did, and he asks us to do. In this world, we make it a certain distance with sight, but as pilgrims of hope, we have to see the world as Jesus does with his vision. Our mission is to see the world in this way. 
According to the modern Catholic dic dictionary, this mission of vision is defined as sending and covers a variety of meanings, all somehow expressing the idea of a going forth from one person to others in order to effect some beneficial change in their favor. Let me go back to the second part, the last part of that definition one more time. Going forth from one person to others in order to effect some beneficial change in their favor. That's what our Lord Jesus did with every encounter he had, every parable he told, every witness he made to God in the world. And what could be more beneficial than sharing your witness to God in your life with others? Of all the things we can give to others, family or friends, isn't this a vision of the world that pilgrims of hope carry with them? Our starting point as pilgrims of hope who are called to see the world through the eyes of God is to unite with God. That's why we have the Eucharist and the sacraments. This is where we draw our grace and our strength to then share his love with others, seeking to love the Lord more in their lives. Our mission begins with God and our vision develops in God. One saint who understood the vision of God in his life was Saint Charbel Makhlouf, there and on your screen. Now, as some of you know, I am a Maronite Catholic priest. The Maronite Church has its roots in Lebanon, and Saint Charbel is one of our saints. Let me tell you a little bit about his story. He was born Joseph Makhlouf in Lebanon in 1828. At the age of 23, he joined the monastery of St. Marin in Lebanon, and he took the name Charbel. He professed his final vows in 1853 and was ordained six years later. Following the example of our patron saint, St. Marin, Charbel lived as a hermit until his death. His reputation for holiness drew people to seek him from all over to receive a blessing and to be remembered in his prayers. Father Charbel followed a strict daily fast and was very devoted to the Blessed Sacrament. He would remain for long hours in adoration, almost continuously on his knees. It is said of him, talk about a lack of sight, but of vision, that no one saw his face while he was alive. He always kept his head down in church, at work or when walking, always looking to the ground. When in church, he always faced the altar with his vision on the tabernacle. He died on Christmas Eve in 1898. Christians and non-Christians soon made his tomb a place of pilgrimage and of cures. Pope Paul VI beatified Charbel in 1965 and canonized him 12 years later. Now, more than 33,000 healing miracles have been reported to date in the records of the monastery of St. Marin in Lebanon. In addition, there are countless thousands of miracles reported abroad, not even recorded yet. Like all the saints, Charbel gives us a vision of life, which points us to God and invites us to cooperate with God's grace, each to our own individual mission, no matter what our situation in life may be. We pray to St. Charbel tonight for his intercession in every aspect of our life where our faith needs deepening 
and our response to God must be more generous. In the first reading tonight, we are told, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I dedicated you. As pilgrims of hope tonight, we are reminded that each of us here is dedicated to work, to see the world through the eyes of God, which views everything in the light of faith, hope, and charity. How's your vision? Your homework tonight is to pray for the intercession of St. Charbel to help you see the world through the eyes of God as a pilgrim of hope. As someone once said, to follow God and see the world through his eyes ultimately means the furniture is going to get rearranged. It's not the way we often see things. Do we see the world in a way that is not as God would? Like Anton's Babinski syndrome, do we see things in ourself that prevent us from true vision, that are in our minds and our hearts locked up, that aren't there or are there and need to be let go of? As pilgrims of hope, how do we let go of those? As pilgrims of hope, we never give up, and we always look to God to continue to reveal his will for us. Tonight, after Mass, we will call you forward to receive prayers of healing and anointing after the Mass tonight. Tonight, as pilgrims of hope, we dedicate ourselves to God and his mission for each and every one of us to see the world as he does and to respond as he would. Good Saint Anne, pray for us. Good Saint Anne, close to the heart of Jesus, walk with us as we dedicate ourselves to our mission as pilgrims of hope to see the world through the eyes of God. Amen.